my clear and my crooked what's the tea i think i'm a little crooked how do i uncrookify <laughs> What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? It is Misha here back at it again with another video. And I know y'all are wondering, like, girl, you can't just come up in here with this type of energy and you've been MIA. I know there's no reason for it. I filmed about three different videos over the course of like a couple months and just never got around to editing them and putting them up. But I'm back, back like I never left. And I'm so happy to be here because I have so many updates to share with y'all and that's what this video will be. So as many of you know, especially if you follow me on IG, if you don't, it is at The Bold Budgeter. Um, also like and subscribe, you know, here to our home. But I have transitioned from debt repayment to FI, which stands for financial independence, which is a part of a larger movement known as FIRE financial independence retire early so as you see i left off the retire early part because i'm not 100 percent sure that's what i want to do um but once i hit a certain number i do know for a fact that i do want to have children at one point and i would love to be able to semi-retire which means take a couple of years off and um, spend time with my children and my family so because that is something that I want to do, FI is the plan that I plan on doing that. So I could take off a couple years and be able to financially support myself and my family. So with that, I have fully maxed out my 403B. If you didn't know, this is how you do B in sign language. So you're welcome, put you on. Um, <laughs> so what that means is that I am fully contributing the whole $19,500 um, pre-tax money to go into my retirement account. So what does that look like? So for me, I'm gonna read you the numbers exactly how they are. So per pay period, I take home less, right? So I have a decrease in income of $426.27 for a total of a monthly decrease of $852.54. So I no longer see that money, right? That is, what usually would come post tax in my paycheck. So yes. I am down $852 a month. In terms of take home pay. But because it is pre-tax money, I'm not just contributing $853. Instead, I'm actually contributing $1,706.26 a month. A, a. A, 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 do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> so as you know, my plan is to reach 100K net worth by 28, and this is on that track to make sure that I hit that number. But it's also allowing money to grow, right? We know that compound interest is incredible. So with compound interest, this money is just gonna grow and grow and grow, right? And based off of my calculations, in about 10 years, the money that's in my account now will double. So I already have some money in there. This is just adding on to the pot. And this is using very, very conservative numbers. One of the accounts that I do invest in, um, on average, produces about a 12% um, interest. So of course, those accounts will do a little bit better than the ones that I have in my fixed account. So my job offers a 7% fixed um, interest that you get no matter what. So no matter what's going on in the market, you can invest in that specific um, account. I am a little bit conservative, so I do have a significant chunk that's in that account. I am like kind of fighting with myself though to be a little bit more aggressive. We know that women tend to be less aggressive when it comes to investing. So I am trying to put myself out there and plus I have a long time till retirement. As y'all know, I'm 27. Uh, so I do wanna take that risk and make sure that my money is making the most money possible. But this video isn't necessarily about right investing. It's more so about what has my experience been over the past three months since I have been fully maxing out. And right now my number is 28%. So 28% of my money is going to be um, invested into my 403 account. Now this again doesn't include my Roth IRA or any other brokerage accounts that I'm investing in. This is just solely my 40B job account. Okay, anyway. So in September it was cool. Um 
September is my birthday month, so I did receive some gifts and some money, so I didn't feel it at all. October, I got an unexpected check. I forgot that I worked. <laughs> See, this is how much I was working out. I forgot that I worked um, over the summer and then got that income in October, so that helped make up. And then November, so far, again, I have did get another job, like a side hustle, not a full job, but just working more hours at my school. So those paychecks are starting to roll in, so I'm not feeling that hit, um, which is nice. I've also been really, really, really intentional about budgeting um, and ensuring that I'm not spending monies in ways that I shouldn't be. However, in October and early November, I did not do good, y'all, <laughs> at all. Um, I just didn't feel like cooking, so I ordered out a lot. Oh, but that is okay because I just finessed my budget in a way that I had to take away from other things. But at that time, that's what I really needed. And again, the personal finance journey is just that personal. I will say that book club is keeping me very accountable. And that has been really helpful in terms of making sure that I am reaching my goals. Not going to lie, COVID, you know, shook a lot of things up, but... I'm not changing my goal of 100K. I'm going to keep pushing to do that. And I know that fully contributing to my 403B will help me do that. Therefore, I'm going to stay the course. So, of course, again, I had to get a side hustle um, just to feel a little bit more comfortable. It was doable based off of my budget. But after paying off my debt, I really didn't want to be in that super sacrifice heavy, like, like energy again right I, I know that it requires sacrifice and I'm totally up to that but I don't want to do the same things that I had to when I was paying off high interest debt so like as you see I got my lashes done it's been so long since I got the individual lashes and it makes me feel good it makes me feel beautiful it makes me feel pretty so this is something that I do want to keep on maintaining and if I didn't get a side hustle i wouldn't necessarily be able to maintain it in the way that I want to. Y'all know my hair costs a little pretty penny. And those are just things that make me feel good and feel nice. And when I was on my debt repayment, there were some things that I did let go. Not anymore. I don't need to do that, so I'm not going to struggle. Um, but all that means is it's going to require a little bit more discipline in order to hit my financial goals and for me that just looks like working a little bit more which i don't mind um the pay is 50 dollars an hour can't really beat that so like come on and it's covid and it's not like i have anything else better better to do can't really you know go out like i used to um but i'm happy and that is something that was really important to me i feel like a lot of people talk about or not feel I know that a lot of people talk about on their five journeys that they wish they would have enjoyed the process more, right? They sacrificed so much. They did so much for in order to hit their fine number, right? That number that means, yes, I can retire early, but they didn't enjoy the process. So for me, I want to be really intentional about enjoying the process. So this might add a couple more months to, to, my, to my time. It might add an, an extra year or so. To my time but i'm okay with that especially because i have the flexibility of i still think i want to work um so i want to do like a semi retirement which also gives me more freedom and flexibility to do some of those things that maybe if i wanted to be completely fire i wouldn't be able to now again this is where i am right now and a couple months from now that can change and a couple years from now that can change but right now i'm really happy um teaching and being an educator Someone asked me the other day, like, what would you do if money wasn't a factor? And the first thing that came to mind was teach. I would still teach. I would still be an educator. And that just confirmed that I am where I'm supposed to be. I may not always have good days, but I'm happy. So for the time being, I'm going to focus on achieving phi just to have that independence and that freedom to leave maybe certain work environments that aren't super great um but also ooh, my speaker just went off y'all um but to also ensure that i'm able to live the life that i want to live as a mother because again to me that's something that i think is really important is having time to stay home with my children and not have to worry about our raggedy maternity leave in this country um and also without causing a burden on my family so that is why i want to you know go full 
for that target number um, and it will probably take me a little bit longer than some people you'll see some people are like yeah I reached by in 10 years or 15 years and that is beautiful and I'm like so excited for those people uh, but for me like I said I want to take some semi-retirement I want to live abroad for six months to a year um, those are my plans which I know will slow down my process but I'm okay with that because again I want to enjoy this process I want to be able to tell people about my experience and how it didn't require so much sacrifice to the point that I was miserable, right? It just re required sacrifice that is needed to have discipline, um, which all human beings should learn how to have. I will say with my debt-free journey, I have become a lot more disciplined and it transfers over into other aspects of your life. And the reason that I am so vocal right about personal finance is because the freedom that I feel is something that I haven't felt before like this pride of being able to take care of myself um it's a great feeling the ability to know that if there was an emergency for six months I could I could be good and not work is a really good feeling and I want to share this with other people uh because it's incredible and unfortunately right we're in this place of a capitalistic society in terms of there are some people who it's a whole that's a whole nother video so i'm not even going to get into that um but being here in this country we know that our government isn't gonna come and save us um it's not gonna happen so yeah um so far so good uh christmas is coming up so i did put aside a, a small amount of money for for gifts um i did tell my friends like y'all let's just do like a you know a secret santa or secret snowflake type of thing so this way we only have to buy one gift instead of a whole bunch of gifts for everybody just because again my income isn't where it used to be um <laughs> if we're being honest but I also think, right, I'm also going to be honest, I also feel like I'm not feeling the hit as much too because I was spending so much money on bills, right, in my, in my debt repayment process, like 2000 to 2500 like, damn, gone, like, to pay off these, these um, my debts, to pay off these creditors. But now that I'm in this new space, even though it's what was $853 less that I'm getting, I don't feel it because I was so used to paying so much money to my debt. So instead of now going to creditors, that money is going to myself and my future. So I feel like the transition hasn't been too hard. In fact, it's been kind of easy, like kind of easy to the point where I'm like constantly looking over my budget. Like, did I miss something? Did I not pay a bill? Like. Why do I have so much? Why do I have so much money? Like, and that that's a great problem to have, right? Right? To be like, why do I have so much money? Um, but fully maxing out will hopefully also help in terms of uh, taxes, income taxes, to reduce my take home. I will say, if you are planning on purchasing a home, do not fully max out because it takes away from your take home pay and that is what the mortgage um folks use to kind of see how much of a loan they should give you what's appropriate compared to your take home pay now granted if you're not going through a mortgage company then don't listen to me fully max out like if you have cash and bread on hand then go for it but if you do need a mortgage do not fully max out because again it takes away from your take home pay which can affect um, the amount that you're eligible for for your loan um outside of that i don't have much um i i probably will max out until like i said i'm ready to uh, purchase a home again which won't be for a while but some advice that i did get from an older teacher was you know fully max out now and learn how to live off that because once you learn how to live off this money it'll be so much easier to maintain that especially because every couple of years we do get a raise thank you hopefully covid doesn't mess up our next raise but you know we do get raises so the impact will be felt less and less and less and i feel like it's a lot easier to learn how to live off of less than having to have a lot then go to less right the 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 culture shock of it for a lack of a better word is very it'll shake you 
<laughs> um, it's very intense. So if you have the opportunity to to give a large percentage, absolutely do it now while you're younger, um, maybe while you don't have children, maybe while you don't have such a large mortgage, right? My mortgage right now is very small compared to what I assume it will be when I'm living in like a four or five bedroom um, home, right? With the backyard and all that other stuff compared to my small little two bedroom co-op. Um, and I say five bedroom because I do plan on having children. Again, I'm not just like one of those people who just wants a big house just for the heck of it. Um, but I don't know where I was going with this, but it's easier to to contribute, especially to your um, investment accounts through your, your employer. Uh, for those of you who have a match, always, always at least take the match because that's free money. Don't leave free money on the table. That's cray cray. Unfortunately, because I work for a nonprofit, you know, being a school, we don't have a, a match, but we do have the 7% fix, right? So you, you, you have certain things that are good. You have certain things that are bad. I don't know what to say. Um, but your girl is living life. I'm feeling free. I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling excited for this journey. I am a little bit nervous about if I will hit my 100K mark uh, because the market is a little finagly right now. Uh, but it's okay. I'm Like I said, I'm, I, I got my new side hustle. I'm working. I'm trying to make it all... Work, work, make this jump. And my people want to jump, jump. I'm trying to make it all, you know, work. So that's where I am. Uh, I will do a budget with me video at some point because I have new numbers. I think it will be exciting to, to have that conversation and just for y'all to see what budgeting looks like for me now at this point compared to when I was paying off debt. Uh, but that's all I have. I hope this video came out good. It's been such a long time, right? In this time we had together. Yeah. Yeah. After I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest. Artlist.io.